hit me. Uh, the question is about uh, the, uh, the effectivity of this this model, because mm -hmm. um, we are speaking now in, in, in a group that when you are a small child, mm -hmm. uh, it's quite effective for you, and it's a, from my perspective an inborn uh, model that you as a child simply copy everything your parents are doing. Mm -hmm. And it's help you to most effectively learn a lot of stuff that's effective for you. Of course, you dur during this path learn some crappy stuff. Mm -hmm. But then in at some stage comes time to rea realize and question um, question those uh, those beliefs and make it make it something really yours mm -hmm. and um, grow over it mm -hmm. and become become mm, a more mature person mm -hmm. but whether the natural um, and most effective approach with uh, dealing with information new topics and areas of of, um, of life isn't just at the beginning follow and believe to the best role model you, you see or have or maybe maybe more of them and combine them mm -hmm. and when you are at some level of of expertise already then then start questioning and mm -hmm. then then apply your model as, as you mentioned it mm. so uh, do i understand you correctly that basically um you're saying you can do this in phases, so to say. First of all, you can just, if you're new to something, you look out for somebody who seems proficient in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You operate on copying, basically, yes. imitating, internalizing, and later you start applying more your own critical analysis of it and start to weed out parts. Maybe, maybe like this. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Same absolutely. Um, I think that's often what happens, and but I still would say that um, the distinction I tried to make before about um, if I have a certain piece of information, if I claim to know that this is true, or if I'm just using it in my actions, I think this is the critical point there for me. So if you're a child, that's not really, this distinction doesn't really exist yet, right? When you're a small child, I would, I would assume. And then when you grow older, you start more, you start to develop more of these categories that, that you build your own uh, library of knowledge, so to say. So I think in, in a child's development, it's a very, as you say, it's probably the only possible way, right? You have to imitate. But now I, feel a now I feel a distinction there. So for example, if I want to learn a new skill, then of course I'm copying people. Or if I want to learn about new topics, I'm taking information from people who seem to have something to say about that. But at this stage, I wouldn't claim to know that this is the truth. It's on in a working stage. So I think later on, and uh, it could very well be that these phases are very important and you have to go through them. And it's not like a thing where you, from the beginning, just operate on my, what, something what I'm suggesting. But I think like, i at least I today feel that I feel better if I want to acquire some new information, some new knowledge, skills, that I keep this distinction in my mind, that I'm using information I'm operating with them, but I still have to determine whether I consider them to be true. So I, I'd say it's not, it's not a necessary thing that, it's, that it always in this first stage immediately um, gets funneled into what you believe to be true. I think there's an, there's an intermediate place where you can park all this stuff once, once you have gained some more Critical this, introspection. This, the question about effectivity, whether this yeah. approach, mm -hmm. where you have the 
the let's say build or information yes. filter in place mm -hmm. during the initial learning stage yeah. where you are a complete beginner mm -hmm. isn't limiting your ability to progress fast yeah it's it's very interesting i th i could I, I, I could I, I could see like, that like I could see that I could see that so I'm I also observed that um, that it seems to be different for different people I think for different for I, I've met people and my wife for example is one of them who is um, much more learns much more in this mode of at least I mean that's kind of my analysis now from the outside but, but she, it's more like I'm, I'm, I'm learning something new from somebody and I'm completely immersing myself into this first I'm like I'm like taking everything I'm sucking it up and then later on I start spitting stuff out again or something like this for example like a, a while a long time ago I trained uh, Aikido for a couple of years it's a Japanese uh, traditional martial arts and it seemed to me that in this area, in this traditional Japanese um, circles, that's exactly what, what the method methodology that was suggested. That you really, you be first you become your master, right? You really, you, you slip into him and you suck everything up and you become him. And then later you can start differentiating your own personality and your own opinion about how to do a technique or something like that. And I, I see people who do that very successfully and for me, it feels not right anymore. For me as well. So I, but I could, why, why I yeah. Apply the critical thinking yes. from the beginning. But That's, I feel it's yeah. limiting. Okay, I don't feel that it's limiting, limiting me. But I see that I can very well see that it's that it's uh, not the right thing to do for everybody. I could imagine. Yeah. I, I thought about um, the, the the way our brain works. Mm -hmm. Conscious, conscious analysis and thinking, and about unconscious analysis and processes, and um, maybe I, I have to think about it more. But uh, I have a, uh, a feeling or thought that it's it's connected to the mm -hmm. unconscious um, process mm. processes in our in our um, thinking and yeah. brain, and then what. Because when you put the filter, then I, I think it's blocking the mm. potential that you have. Mm. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's uh, interesting to observe. It's observe it's it. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. 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 All right. Sorry, it's, uh, I, it's just uh, just a quick question. Is yeah. it, it enough uh, to just spend a few years in internet discussions where people Google everything you say? You mean that's the cure? Like that's that's the shock therapy kind of approach? <laughs> it's, it's a disciplining, yeah. And it's better to be anonymous on that forum. Yeah, maybe. I somehow I brought this face of, of forums behind me in the times of bulletin boards before the internet, so I kind of stayed away from that as far as possible during the, once the internet came really along. So, but I, yeah, I, there are plenty of people who, who who are waiting for you to set you set you right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, earlier you said that to bring something up to your box of truth, mm -hmm. you'd separate it from the source. And I'm yeah. curious okay. about that process because mm -hmm. unless you go and reinvent the wheel, you always get knowledge from a source. Mm -hmm. And like. How many different sources do I need to separate it from a, uh, a single source? Or hmm. how, how do I do that? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So I think there are... One thing that comes to mind there is, I was just, just actually just before thinking about that. Um, what you can, of course, do is you can put the assumptions part of some statement you can put this in the box as well. You could say, you could say like, if x and y is true, then this follows. 
right? So, so you can be sure about a, about a certain conclusion, but if the assumptions are true, you can still be unsure about. It's like if, if somebody gives me a logical proposition with two assumptions, and I say, like Janne did before, I examine the semantics, and I can't, can't see any problem there. I examine, examine the logics, I can't see any problem there. Then I'd say, well, this conclusion is correct. But I can still say, well, the, the premises in the beginning, I'm not yet sure yet. And I think that is that might I, I, I can't, can't give you a defin, definitive answer in this, but that might be something that there that there are cutoff points there where you can still say, well, I, I'm sure about this part, but the part before is not something that I'm definitely definitely sure on. There there can be premises in certain statements, so that might be a suggestion in this direction. But um, I agree, it's a um, with lots of things, there's a long chain connected to, to the actual thing you're interested in. And then um, the question is where, where, do you, where can you reasonably cut it off and make a, its own thing out of it? But I think that that's, that's what I would, would, want, would try to explore if, it's, if that's not one method of being very conscious about the premises of something. And the premises are like, like, like in this, it reminds me on this one, on this, uh, of this one paragraph that Janne had in the morning where the first half of the sentence was this guarding statement, putting aside this whole debate about determinism versus free will, you know, to put s such guarding statements in there. Like I'm, my, the result of my conclusion could change the one way or the other, if I have definitive knowledge about the premise. But still, I can, it feels to me that I can cut off at this point, at this premise point. But, yeah, it's something I have to think about now. Yeah. Okay. I think Jana was first. Yeah. Um, in our group, there was, among others, the question, um, if you have something which you think belongs uh, in your box of truth, um, is the truth the same for everybody? Should this be on everybody's shelf then? Eventually, if they think, think long enough? Or? Well, I mean, this, uh, this really depends. And I think there's uh, interesting things to explore there still. I'm not, I'm, I haven't done this fully either. It very much depends on what you, what you include in this box. Right, so if you include, let's say, uh, there are, I think, things where we all can agree that people will come to the same result. If we stick to very to basic logical laws, for example, or just basic things that can be, with a little bit of work and, and, and acquiring a skill, can be proven to be true or false, some statements in mathematics or whatever. And then there are things, for example, I, and maybe I'm, uh, I overheard something from <laughs> the conversations, a big question is, of course, what do you do with empirical knowledge? Is empirical knowledge part of the box? Is there a little extension house at the <laughs> box for empirical stuff? Because it's like categorically different, right? So with empirical stuff, for example, well, by, by the method itself, you, you don't get to the 100%. So how can you expect that everybody should have the same claim in there in the end? So if you want to put this all in one box, <laughs> in your mental image, then I would say, well, you cannot expect that everybody should have the same stuff there. If you restrict it more to the pure logical things, then yeah, it might be reasonable. But uh, there might be distinctions like that. Can I put in an additional question then? Because yeah. the other question that we had in the group, is there also ethical propositions in, in, in the box? Well, that depends how you Well, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, let me think, how do I answer this one? Um, so let's say, it depends what your, what your um, opinion is on this, right? So if you think that you are sure that some ethical norm is logically provable, like a priori, then it should be in there. 
if you don't think you can do that, or if you haven't, you are not really sure if you can do that, then I could still have a, a norm like that, but that's more than, then we are again more back to the area of preferences. I could still have a norm. I don't, I consider it to be wrong for people pushing me. You know? And then you can again think of how do you, how, where do you put these kind of personal um, inner, inner life things basically, right? So for example, also dreams, experiences. I know for me they are true, they are very, they happened, right? They are real. And where do I put them? Um, that's not really the area I was talking about or I haven't thought about that too much. But um, yeah, it, I think it really depends where you put ethical statements. If you are sure to the best of your abilities and knowledge that you can, that this is something a priori provable, it should be in there. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think first of all, I would, I would still, for me, just for clarity, I would make a, a very clear distinction between empirical knowledge and a priori knowledge. That being said, I, I would, in the empirical department, it makes much more sense, it makes sense for me to, to have some kind of scale there or some kind of a, it's, it's a feeling in the end, right? How sure am I? Um, and, but this is all under the premise that, that empirical knowledge is something categorically different from the other one, because I never get there in the end. And I just, that's just a fact of, of, this, of this subject of investigation, right? I have to live with that. And so I would try to install a little separate house somewhere where I, where I put the stuff because I can never, the other one in the, in the, with the a priori stuff, there it's just the, the only thing left is did I make a mistake, right? I, I can always be wrong because I had an uh, error in my thinking and my, I can make a mistake in my proof or something like that. We all have done that in school probably <laughs> in, in, in math tests. Um, and I think I got it right, but I didn't. And with the other stuff, there's just in principle a limitation of how far I can get with this method. So yeah, I, I would put this somewhere separate, but then I, sure, I also have kind of a feeling about is this, am I more sure or is this like higher up in there or lower up? Yeah. Definitely. And you have the same hierarchy for the stuff that's not even in the <coughs> box, but it's... You could complicate this model quite a lot, I think. <laughs> yeah, would, you, uh, would you agree that the proof is the accuracy at which the ideas reflect objective reality? Can you repeat this, please? That the truth is the accuracy at which ideas reflect objective reality? Well, it depends. It, this, would, this would be one definition of truth for a certain for a certain field, right? Uh, when, when it comes to basically empirical truth, like I'm, if I'm making a truth claim about the external world, about like external reality, then that would be one definition of how truth can be defined. The accuracy, basically how this matches up. I think this is valid for all. Well, but uh, if it's about the a priori realm, it, I don't compare it to the, to the external reality. Then it's about internal consistency with the axioms or the premises. So I, I would make this, and, and I think then let's, let's just assume we are currently, if, I, if I'm talking about truth about the external world, then that would be one way. The trick of course in there is how do you compare your thesis, your statement with the external world, how do you measure accuracy there? There, there's, there, yeah, there are issues. We can test hypothesis. We have distribution of uh, statistical distribution. We can reject or, or confirm that uh, the hypothesis based on uh, distribution hmm. of uh, random values. Uh, I think we can test. Yeah, I mean there are. Yeah, you can. I mean there are lots of premises always in these systems, 
because the, the also this the the suggestion you are you are making of the definition of a truth basically is just one of many right there are and they all have flaws and i'm i'm not really i'm not an expert on this we really. i just know that there are you can think of many ways what what a truth about the external world how this how you, you could define that and each of them has a problem a philosophical problem and so did i understand properly yeah. that you are trying to move along like these three levels of truth like or whether you accept that there no. is some continuous scale yeah i would i would because discrete levels would require actually that i can somehow put an ordinal number on them or something like that right in the end i cannot put numbers on them i just have a feeling about how sure i am and you might have a bit different feeling about you sh how sure you are about something but to put i think if we start p putting numbers on this it's more of a communication tool because i want to communicate somehow to you in an understandable way how i feel inside but it's de so definitely i wouldn't i think i wouldn't say either way it's not really discrete or 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 non discrete create it's it's just the problem that i have something i have an experience inside of me and i'm trying to communicate that and i'm not sure what the best way is but it gets kind of numerical when i put it out to you you know so um my experience is that it's i could probably distinguish I, I'm not sure. I, I haven't done, thought about this in a while, but, but you can make this experiment yourself. How many different buckets of, of sureness you think you can distinguish? Uh, it's, it's infinite. Hmm? Infinite. If it's continuous, then it's infinite. Exactly, but I'm, I'm, just, um, I'm just thinking about how do you, if you really think about it, you know, if you think all kinds of different things you have in your head, statements, how sure are you about them, does it feel like in the end three big categories or can you be more granular? I'm not really sure how far, if, if the assumption is it's, it's continuous, then it's infinite, but I'm not. Right, but can, no. you, can you not make the experiment that you're betting your money? Uh, somebody has a memorable with Alice in the Basin. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to be open and you have to bet money uh, on the answer. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I think the problem there is a translation problem, I think, right? Because you, at some point, you can assign more decimal places in the numbers you're communicating. I'm like 5.798% sure, but does this still mean anything? You know, like, is there, is there this kind of accuracy when I'm trying to translate my inner experience into language? No, and no, that's, I think there's just a limit. Yeah. If, if I would bet 53, yeah. uh, if I would accept the odds of 53% uh, or 54%, uh -huh. I could uh, have a preference between these two. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think there is a limit of, of what makes sense, right? What, what you feel you can distinguish. So maybe I can just slip this in very quickly because, yeah, it's just a minute. Because I, I had one thing on my, on my little notebook before that I left out then. But um, I think it's an interesting exercise because it wasn't so easy for me. So if you like to do this, you can at some point take, take a few minutes and think about, to think about an important thing, an important statement or something like that which you consider to be true, so something that's meaningful, right? Something that re is really a meaningful insight for you. And one that fits into this category of things you really consider to be true, and then one that's really important to you that is in this other cat category of I'm not sure. And I wanted, I had this on my, on my paper to, to ask you to think about this. And then I, at some point I thought, okay, I have to do this myself <laughs> also. And I thought about it and it was not so easy. It was interesting to, to, to think about what's actually in there and what of, it, what, what of the different things that are swimming in my bucket down here, for example, are important to me. So that's just a suggestion of, a, a, of an experiment you can do for yourself. So I think we are out of time, right? Yep. Thank you.